Good morning, good morning. It is a delight to have you with us here this morning. This is a great day to be alive because the God that we serve, He is alive. And no matter what you're facing in your daily walk with God, know for one thing for sure that God is with you and victory is yours. I've been so excited about this series that we have been doing the last several weeks, Standing Firm or Standing Firm in the Faith or Standing Firm in Your Faith. And we've we've dived into different aspects of what it means to stand firm. And you know as well as I know that there's a lot that's going on in this uh, society today, a lot of things that we are facing. But understand one thing, God is in control of everything. And I know that sounds cliche, but nevertheless, it is true. God is in control of all things. So listen, I want to continue in this series, Standing Firm. And if you will, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians 6, 12, Ephesians 6, 12. And it reads, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Let me break that down into another translation. It says, for we are wrestling. That is our intense struggle, fierce combat, contest, challenge, and ongoing conflict is not really with flesh and blood, but with principalities and so forth. Now listen, This is really interesting because when I think about this, about wrestling, my mind goes back to many years ago on every Thursday night at seven o'clock, I could not wait to get before the TV and watch big time wrestling. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Big time wrestling. If you know what I'm talking about, just give me a thumbs up, okay? Big time wrestling. We will watch them, you know, lift each other up and throw them down, you know, on the floor and stump on their chest. Now, sometimes I look at that and I said, now, you know, they ought to stop their lies. You know, they ain't doing that. But sometimes it was really real. Which let me realize that they were fighting to, for competition because they wanted to know who was going to be the best. And the only way that they were able to be the best was they had to get involved in the ring with close proximity with each other. Now listen, just before I go into more of this, I'm gonna take a short break because we're gonna come back and we're gonna find out what really is wrestling, all right? We're gonna take a short break, we'll be right back. Don't go away, be right back. What's up everybody, I'm RJ and I wanna thank you so much for tuning in to our nine o'clock AM Sunday morning service. Now, before we jump back into it, I wanna give you a few updates, a few reminders, a few announcements. Really quick, here we go. At the top of the list, I wanna remind you that we do have service at 10 o'clock AM, all right? Every Sunday morning, it's a physical service, and if you do want to come, remember that we are taking the necessary safety precautions. All right, we're wearing our mask, we got some sanitizer everywhere. Uh, We do have some social distancing that we're practicing, so we want to let you know that we would love to see you, uh, but we are going to make things safe as possible. Uh, Also, We want to remind you that we have weekly family guides for our upcoming generation. If you go to the website at church110.com, click that C110 Next tab at the very top, and you'll be able to see everything we have going on. We want to make sure we're connecting with everybody uh, and all of our youth. Also, we're trying to make sure we connect with everybody throughout the week, all right? So Thursdays are our Zoom hangout small groups, all right? So we want to invite you to talk, laugh, learn, and pray with us. You can click the link below for that information and also visit our website. Also, if you're not already, be sure to follow us on social media at church.110. Don't forget to like, share this video, smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all C110 content. Almost done. We got a few more. Also, we have a Facebook group. All right. Like I said, we are making sure we are connecting with everybody. You can click the link in the description below uh, to be joined into the Church 110 family so we can get to know you, we can laugh, we can talk, and we can grow together. Lastly, if you would like to give the church 110 we made it easy for you You can click on the link below in the description or you can visit our website at church110.com we would love any support that you can give us we have so many things we're working on and we're trying to do as much as we possibly can but we need your support so thank you for tuning in i'm gonna get out the way we're gonna dive right back into service here's apostle johnson welcome back welcome back i told you before the break that we were going to delve into what really is wrestling. 
few days ago, my son uh, wanted me to watch a movie called The Invisible Man. And we sat down and we watched this movie. So it was a very intriguing movie, you know, intense, suspenseful. But the part that I liked the most, if some of you watched it, you know, the best part to me was when at the end of the movie, when they were sitting down at the table, you know, and she excused herself, she went and put on the invisible uh, suit and came back <laughs> and took him out. You know, she took him out. And I began to look at that and think about that, that we are fighting an invisible enemy that we cannot fight on our terms. We have to get involved where they are. This enemy that we're fighting is invisible and it is spiritual. It is not of flesh and blood. We have, to, we have to stand against the onslaught of this enemy. And it is something that God has equipped us to do. In order to stand, we have to get on his level. In other words, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You cannot fight. You, and I repeat, you cannot fight a spiritual battle with carnal, with car, with carnal means or fleshly means because this is a spiritual battle. I'm reminded of Paul, I believe it was in Acts 16, and uh, there was a, a, a dismal, dismal that was saying, you know, these men are from God. These men are from God. And she went around day after day making this proclamation about Paul. And she got, he got to the point where he got so aggravated with that that he turned around and cast out that spirit of, of that woman, which means he recognized it was more than just somebody's voice. He recognized that there was a spirit that was pushing her and, and directing her to, uh, to, make, to make this proclamation. The real battle is not with flesh and blood. Not with flesh and blood. In fact, if the battle is not with flesh and blood, I have a question for you. Now, now listen, I would love for some of you to put something in the chat and talk back you know, to us because this is important. If our web, if, if our, if our um, uh, wrestling is not with flesh and blood, why is it that we fight each other? Why is it that we come against each other? And God forbid that we should do that. Our, 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 our wrestling is not with flesh and blood. Do you not know there are, there are hundreds of of Christian denominations, even in America, hundreds of Christian denominations. And it's, it, it's, I believe it breaks the heart of God that even though we may seem different on certain aspects of, of, of our faith, that I believe it grieves God's heart that when we begin to cause our love and our fellowship to separate over doctrine. Now listen, I believe this, there's one thing that we have to agree on. And that is the foundational aspect of who Jesus is. Now that we have to agree on and what he came to do. But we're never going to agree on everything. This is not something that is old. I mean, something that is new. This is old. When you search all the way down through church history, it always came to a time where the church had different viewpoints on different aspects of our faith. But that does not, it does not give us the right to separate ourselves. Jesus said this. He said, the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. That is how we are to let the world know who Jesus is. It's not by your giftings. It's not by your anointing. It's not by how many people is in your church. It's not by where you live, how much money you have. Do you have the love of God on the inside of you to reach out to somebody else? Because that is what is important. So out of all of that we go through, and, and, and especially in this country, there's so many, there's so much division. No wonder why Jesus said that a house divided against itself can't stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. You can go on some cities in this nation and you will find a church on every corner. You go to one church, you're saved. You go to another church two blocks down the road, you're not saved. You know, we're, we're fussing and fighting over non-essential matters. 
while people in our society, in our culture, is being dominated by the forces of darkness. We are fussing and fighting over non-essential matters. And this is why I believe that everything that's going on right now, the Lord is pressing in on us, causing us to, to, understand, to understand what really matters. So when we when we are in the gospel and we're doing what God has called us to do, that is what matters. That will be, you know, and he said that, that there will be no divisions among us. You know, we are endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. We are endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Let there be no divisions among us. Again, I know that we're not going to agree on everything, but when it comes to when it comes to loving one another, as I said earlier, we have to do that. So Paul said, we wrestle. We wrestle. This is what we do. <laughs> we wrestle. The history of the church has always been in a wrestling match with the enemy. It started with our Lord. You know, technically, I can go all the way back to Genesis. But technically, you know, we, it started with our Lord and, and, and wrestling and Fighting the good fight of faith is something that we are, we have been inducted to because the Lord has that, you know, he calls us to do warfare against the enemy that does not love us or love him. The wrestling match speaks of a contest at close quarters. You can't wrestle somebody from across the room. <laughs> you got to get, you have to get in close quarters with them, which is a unfriendly and hostile situation. In the first century, wrestling was a deadly sport. In fact, most wrestlers chose to fight to the death rather than walk out the ring in humiliation and defeat. It was an ugly, bloody sport. It was between two individuals in which the victor, now this is interesting, in which the victor will be able to press down on the neck of his opponent to strangle him into submission. To press down on his neck, to strangle him into submission. Press down on the neck to strangle into submission? That's, that's really interesting. When I, when I begin to, to look at that and we begin to meditate upon that, I say, what is, well, what is strangle? What is strangulation? To strangle means to die from interference with breathing. To keep someone from breathing by exhorting pressure on the windpipe. You know, we all know what has happened to George Floyd in these last few days. And, you know, it's been a, a tragic thing that's happened. But actually what he did was when he had his knee on his throat, he was, he, he was having a slow, he was strangling him slowly until it got to the point that no air no longer could penetrate his lungs. There is a spiritual strangulation in this wrestling. The enemy is out to strangle us. This is not a, listen, what is that? Back in the day, back in the uh, early 70s, I don't know if some of y'all remember this. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm telling my age, but y'all, I don't know if y'all remember uh, Tiny Tim. He had long hair and a little guitar, bugle lady, I guess what it called. And he, he was singing a song, you know, tiptoes through the tulips, you know, real peaceful song. He got famous on that song, which I do not understand how he got famous on that song, but he got, Jesus help us, he got famous on that song. And, and, and people took that. This is not something that you're tiptoeing through the tulips. This is not tulips, baby. This is warfare. And if you, if you are in the kingdom of God, you know as well as I know that from the day one, when you started walking with Christ, things started happening. Now, I know when we first get saved, it's a honeymoon. You love everybody. Everybody looks sweet. Everything looks good. You believe in God for everything, and it's wonderful. But as you walk with God, you start finding out that there's somebody on the other line, on the other side of the line, that does not want you to make it. And that is the part where you have to wrestle. You have to wrestle. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, All scripture is God-breathed and used for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and, I love this part, and training in righteousness. <laughs> training in righteousness. What do I mean by training? Training is, is, is to provide instruction with the intent of forming proper habits of behavior, of providing guidance for responsible living, 
for rearing and guiding a child toward maturity. A child will not come to maturity if he's not trained. I have a little grandson, three years old. You know, his parents are training him. I have another grandson that's right at one year old. He's being trained. It starts from here. And you start training them and teaching them and disciplining them and talking to them, you know, and chastising them because all of that goes in training. We, we are some of the most undisciplined people sometimes. In, in the world, in the world, American Christians, we are so undisciplined because we don't know what it is to really fight and, and, and really train and, and get involved in the sweat and blood when it comes to wrestling with the enemy. We want everything to be smooth. We want to tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> the upbringing and handling of the spiritual child who is growing into maturity and who needs direction, teaching, instruction, and a, and a certain measure of compulsion in the form of discipline or chastisement. Teaching can be done in the classroom in one, in one hour, but training takes years so that your senses respond correctly. You can be taught and not trained and you still won't be successful. Training involves repeating, hearing, and studying the word so that eventually your spiritual reflexes begin to respond properly to what the word teaches. So what am I saying in all of this? Then you are not just taught, but you've been trained. Not just being taught, but being trained, being disciplined, going through the boot camp of our spiritual journey, going through the boot camp of, of training and disciplining yourself to be able to, to uh, meet the enemy. You ask the question, what am I being trained for? What are you being disciplined for? You're being disciplined for warfare. You are in an army. You are in, you are in a, 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 a family that, that is destined for victory. Let me inject this. Let me inject this. You are in this for training, not just to do warfare with the enemy here, but God has a greater, a greater plan for you in the ages to come. When you pass, when we pass out of these bodies, we're not going to just be walking around heaven all day and singing kumbaya. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen that way. You know, that would be, that would be quite boring, just walking around to heaven, you know, kumbaya, praise the Lord, hallelujah, just walking around heaven. No, no, God is more intelligent than that. He's much more intelligent than that. Listen, when Jesus comes, we are going to rule and reign with the king for a thousand years. Everything that you are going through right now is preparing you for your position, for your position in the kingdom that is coming. Right now, the church is feverish trying to inject the kingdom of God right now in, in the seven mountains of society. But we know we, they won't get to the full extent of it until the king comes. But right now, what you're going through, the warfare you're going through, the wrestling that you're going through, the tears, and, the, and sometimes defeats, because you don't win every battle. Our heads couldn't take it. <laughs> so God allows sometimes the enemy to overpower us for our good. But you are being trained for your future, that the sufferings of this present time are even worthy to be compared of the glory that should be revealed in us in that day. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's wonderful now, even in the midst of the struggle, even in the midst of the wrestling. It's wonderful right now because we know, you know, the old song says, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout now. Yes, you can. You can shout. Hey, you can shout right now. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the king. He's the victor. And he lives inside of me and inside of you. The enemy desires to get his hand on our neck to, str to strangle us. How? By stopping your training. Let me get, uh, give another word in, in place of training. Your discipline. If he can stop you from being disciplined, even though I've met people many times that have gone through the service and, and they may uh, retire years later, you know, and then they yet 
let me say it this way. They yet are disciplined in their daily lives because they went to boot camp. They learned a lot. And it's, it's a part of their nature, you know, and when we are saved and we're walking with God, yes, it, it should, it should, discipline should become a part of our nature. The enemy wants to stop your discipline. It's a wrestle to continue to engage in prayer, to engage in Bible study, to in, engage in meditation and interpretation and studying to show yourself approved by God. It, 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 it's a struggle to be able to fight the good fight of faith. It's a struggle, it's a wrestle to fast. These are disciplines in our life that keep us going, that keep us strong, that keep us moving forward. If we lose those disciplines, we will become weaker and weaker. The enemy wants to put his hand on our necks, and especially in all what's going on right now, he wants you to stop, he wants you to doubt God. He wants you to say, what's the use? He wants you to be full of fear and anxiety, not knowing what to do, which way to go. But listen, beloved, I'm going to let you know today that, that Jesus Christ is greater than the enemy. He's greater than anything that this world could ever throw at you. He's greater than any situation that could ever come your way. Don't ever forget what Paul said, for God causes all things, the good and the bad, you know, all things to work together for good to them that love God. It's conditional to them who are the called according to his purpose. So what I'm saying to you today, what you're going through, God is working his purpose out in your life. I know many times we say, it's my purpose. But actually, the purpose comes from him. Because he's given you purpose before the ages began. And I think it's in first, uh, 2 Timothy 1.9. He's given you, he you purpose before the ages began and grace. You have purpose and grace before you got here. God's purpose. And God knew that for order for his purpose to be worked out in your life, you were going to need his grace. So he has given us the means of grace, which is in the word, meditation, moving forward in God. It's important that we understand we're in the wrestle. And if you are in the kingdom of God, you are in a battle. You are in a battle. Your finish will determine how well you keep yourself disciplined. Don't let the enemy put his hand on your neck to strangle you, that you will be ineffective. God wants you to be effective. So those of you right now that you, you feel like, you know, you feel like you're not gonna make it, you feel like, you know, I'm tired, I'm weary, the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll reap. You'll reap. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting those negative thoughts that come in your mind to make you doubt who God is. Keep on fighting those negative mind, thoughts in your mind to make you feel like that, that, that everything is going to just go to pot. No. God knows exactly what he's doing. This is the time to trust him. And when you feel like that you, that you can't take another step, the Holy Spirit is there in you to empower you to move forward. He will strengthen you. If you're weak, that's why he's here, to give you strength. You can't do this on your own. You can't. So you're in a wrestling match? Yes. It's intense? Yes. Is it getting more intense? Yes. Will it get more intense? Yes. But that's all right. The greater the, the, the battle, the greater the victory. I want to pray for you right now on the other side of this camera that you're going through a rough time in your life, especially now, and it's really rough for you. And you really are afraid. You really are. You really are, you are afraid. And you don't know, God, how am I going to make it through this? Some of you are saying, well, I, I don't study the word like I should. I, I, don't, I don't pray like I should. I don't, I, don't, I don't fast like I should. You know what? Jesus made it really simple. He said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he said, he'll give it for you. He'll, he'll, he'll do it for you. So if you're weak in these areas and you're disciplined, ask him to help you. That's why the Holy Spirit is inside of you, to help you. He's not, he's not here to condemn you. Convict you, yes, not to condemn you. And when you're weak, he's strong. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, I know that there are some people there 
that are hearing this word that they don't know really what to do or how to go about this, but I pray that you have given them instruction that they may fortify themselves, that they may strengthen themselves in the Holy Spirit. Lord, that they may, they may get into your word and, 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 and dine and meditate on your word. For you said in your word that if we meditate on your word day and night, we shall make our way prosperous and we shall have good success. That we should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that we will bring forth our fruit in its season. Lord, I pray that you would create a hunger and those, oh God, that may be lacking, create a hunger, stir them up from within. Let them see your beauty. Let them see your glory. Let them see your love and your loving kindness for them. And I thank you for it. And I praise you for what you're going to do right now, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I pray that you, amen, will be praying with me. And I pray that God bless you and strengthen you. Listen, we're going to be right back here next Sunday at 9 o'clock. I want you to, amen, tune in on this. Listen, don't forget. Amen. If you if you're enjoying this, you know, talk to us. You know, uh, you know the chat area or or <laughs> the I, sometimes I'm 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 learning this stuff. All right, <laughs> I'm learning this. So you know what to do. You some of you don't know that you are uh, computer savvy. You know what to do. Okay, so hit us up or let us know that you're enjoying this world. All right, love you much. God bless you.